Hello, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we are going to study module 12 that is participatory communication methods. After studying this unit, you will be able to understand the meaning of participatory communication, identify the phases of a communication program, explain the aspects of participatory communication, analyze the steps involved in participatory communication method of development, comprehend the benefits of participatory communication methods, evaluate risks and constraints of participatory communication methods. Now that you are aware about the objectives behind this module, let us see what are participatory communication methods. Every society has its own issues. We all need to understand these issues and solve these issues. Participatory communication methods help us to solve these problems and issues. Paulo Freire, a northeastern Brazilian adult educator, tried this approach in his community. He took the help of all the stakeholders and tried to solve the issues of that particular community. He involved them and purposefully engaged them into communication, trying to find out what problems they had and find out solutions to those problems and work upon them in such a manner that the issues were also solved. At the same time, they took onus of their actions. Thus, participatory communication method was started and it was taken up as an, a very good solution to solve issues that every community has. So let us see what this is. People engage in the planning, monitoring and evaluation of change processes required in their community in participatory communication methods. For this, purposefully designed communication platforms and mechanisms are used and people's participation is assured. Information and experiences are shared when people come together and at the same time they explore together and search new knowledge which in turn helps to improve situations in the community. Therefore, participatory communication is an approach which facilitates the people of the community to take decisions about issues in their own community. Now, there are various phases of a communication program. Participatory communication is considered significant because a wide consensus is sought from all participants. Many skirmishes and obstacles can be prevented if addressed quickly. Genuine participation also increases the sense of ownership by local stakeholders, thus enhancing sustainability. Truly effective communication should occur among all parties affected, ensuring all have similar opportunities to influence the outcome of the initiative. Ideally, participatory communication should be part of the whole project process. Two-way communication should be adopted from the beginning and be applied consistently. Full participation by stakeholders in any step of the process is not possible and in some cases probably not desirable too. Broad consensus may be sufficient. Inclusiveness must be balanced with consideration of stakeholders' time, resources, interests and knowledge. After their input is taken into account, stakeholders may not need to be involved in detailed decisions beyond the scope of their interests. The basic phases of a communication program are the first one, Participatory Communication Assessment, that is PCA. There are issues in the community which are identified and problems are analyzed by the NGOs who undertake the project along with the people of that community. They interact with each other in openly and assess the situations. Second phase is the Participatory Communication Strategy Design. The objectives are different 
defined and various suitable strategies are discussed upon which would help to achieve the set objectives. The third phase is implementation of communication activities. Relevant activities are planned and actual plans of implementation are made. This helps in managing and monitoring the strategies. The fourth phase is monitoring and evaluation phase. Evaluation should be planned from the beginning of an initiative. Furthermore, if participation means that stakeholders are partners in the decision-making process, they must also be partners in impact evaluation. There are certain key aspects to participatory communication. Now, what are these key aspects? The first one is a commitment to learning. Local people understand the conditions of the community best. Therefore, their involvement in the development projects becomes beneficial. They are able to prioritize issues to be addressed. They are also able to analyze skills possessed by the people of the local community. They can guide the participants with respect respect to availability of resources and en encourage maximum participation for bringing about sustainable change. Once the local people are engaged, they are committed to learning and become accountable for progress. The second key aspect is participation and partnership. Partnership moves beyond a benefactor-recipient relationship to a more equal sharing of skills, power and ideas. The third key aspect is empowerment. By activating institutions and deprived people in the process of empowerment, local people can gain greater control over their own futures and their own development agenda. Now, let us have a look at what are the steps involved in participatory communication at the community level. The first step is identifying a community. To begin a participatory communication project, an organization may select a community with which it has already worked earlier or is familiar with. They prefer to enter a known community because it is easier to seek participation and achieve the set objectives. If the community is totally new, it takes a longer period to build rapport with the local people and make the most of their resources and capacities. If the organization already possesses a popular name and credibility, the community accepts it faster and develops a feeling of trust because they have already heard heard about them. However, if the NGO or the organization is a new one, it takes time to build rapport with the community and it also takes time for the community to build trust upon that NGO. The second step is preparing an action plan. Once the NGO and the community know each other, a decision to collaborate or not to collaborate is taken. The next step is often the planning of the collaboration. Communication plays an important role at this stage. As many people as possible from the community are encouraged and provided with the opportunity to participate in the planning process. Meetings of the community are good starting points. The leaders of the enterprise will probably emerge at this stage. The person facilitating the process should ensure that leaders are eventually elected by a majority and interferences in the choice of the leaders are reduced to a minimum. After the elections are conducted, there is a possibility that contenders who have lost may decide to leave the group, taking with them their family, their friends and supporters. How the group responds to their departure is important in setting the tone for future interactions between the group and the departing members. Here, the organization or the NGO plays a major role. They have to convince the people who have not been voted as leaders to also be a part of the project and help whenever and wherever and however possible. The third step planning what to do is to reflect upon the current conditions, problems, aspirations and resources of the community. Traditional and folk media, techniques of dramatization, videos, photographs and presentation of research findings are various strategies to highlight the issues present in the communities without the 
fear of actually having to confront the real culprits involved in these issues. Every community will have certain culprits. They are only the cause of those issues in that community. This is the time when these culprits can be identified and also people can reflect upon how they can be traced. The next step is providing support. Once the issues have been identified and priorities are set, there is a need of action. Groups evolve within the community to run the activities of that community. The groups may comprise of opinion leaders such as a religious leader, traditional birth attendant, teacher, folk musician, actor and others with a flair and a love of communication and interaction with people. These groups may be offered training in communication methods. Such training should emphasize the principles of participation and the supportive role of communication in triggering participation. It is the way they will communicate with each other that is going to solve their problems. This is where communication plays a major role and thus this is the reason why it is called participatory communication method. The word communication emerges here. The importance of communication can be seen here where people provide support to each other by the means of communication. To be congruent with the goals of participatory communication, all training should focus on communication as an instrument to empower the people rather than as a vehicle for moving information. The next step is rehearsing the process. Action should be taken in a series of steps, starting with the most urgent or most manageable and then moving on to others after it has been completed. This way of iterating the process provides the community with the opportunity to learn and become familiar with the process. Duplication also facilitates increasing degrees of participation amongst members of the community as they learn to work with each other and develop confidence and loyalty for each other. The more they work with each other, the better the rapport they have amongst themselves and better trust and confidence is developed. A good team spirit is developed, cooperation is developed among the team members and this is how they proceed further. The last step is moving away from the community. Once the people of the community start their work in full swing and are confident about taking it to completion, slowly the organization involved with them withdraws from it. However, the NGO keeps a track of the activities undertaken and its process and also its progress. This way, then leaving this community, it starts off hunting for a new community with a new problem. Many benefits of participatory communication methods. Let's see one by one. Participatory communication helps to endure the process of getting services of the local people. That is one. Participatory communication enables the common people to get information of policies and plans for the upliftment of the community with the help of dialogue, debate and activities of engagement. It is a democratic method of solving issues and problems of the community since it involves dialogues and debates. Objectives are set to achieve the progress of the community. Participatory communication becomes an instrument to monitor that progress. Local groups can reflect, learn, assess a project by way of communication as they get ample opportunities. It gives an opportunity to build rapport with an organization. Participatory communication methods give a voice to a wider range of stakeholders as the process is even more useful than the outcome. It gives opportunities to gain insights into gender, hierarchy, collaboration and consensus issues. There is more emphasis on active and experiential learning. In the process, people gain a lot of information, a lot of knowledge and learn tremendously. Of course, it also has certain risks and constraints. So let us see what are the risks involved in participatory communication methods. The first risk is the difference of opinion. The community is divided into smaller groups when there are differences of opinion among the participants. Dealing with this bickering becomes a great challenge. 
it may occur on objectives, the methods of doing things and involvement or exclusion of certain members of the community. It also depends on who has the leadership and how they deal with the other members of the group. If the leader is democratic in nature, is flexible and can accommodate everyone and can take everybody along, there arises no problem. But if the leader tries to be authoritative, has his own way of doing things, does not understand that people have to move along together, there are small bickerings and this creates problems. Difficulty in replicating is the second risk that is involved in participatory communication methods. Every community has people who have some special qualities. Besides, the structure and attributes of the community itself are important for success. They are specific to that particular community. Other communities may not possess the same kind of efficiency. Thus, it is not possible to use the same strategies which were successful in a particular community. Depending upon the potential of the people in the adopted community, changes have to be made in the initiatives taken to bring about a change in the situations prevalent there. Definitely, every community has a set of people who have their own skills, their own potentials. A particular community may be good in all aspects, whereas another community may not be so. This is very important for the organization who adopts that community to understand and follow a particular strategy in accordance with the ability and potential of that particular community. The third risk involved is the type of governance in the state. In certain states, the control of the government is very strict. In such cases, it becomes very difficult for the organization to seek participation. It is a challenge for the NGOs to get local participation and motivate them to communicate with others. Therefore, the type of governance in the states also is a great challenge to be dealt with. Another risk factor is the NGO specialization. In the early days, most NGOs worked on almost all types of issues in the community. However, now most NGOs have specialized areas of work. These organizations face difficult problems when working in the participatory mode because people often identify issues and problems outside the NGO's area of specialization for action. A solution to this problem is collaboration with other organizations. Being concomitant with other communications is another challenge that is faced by participatory communication. Few communities live in total isolation from the outside world. In terms of communication, they may be reached by entertainment films in cinemas, televisions, radios, newspapers and magazines from the cities. Salespeople from companies and others who do not practice participatory forms of communication. Facilitators need to introduce ways of coexisting so that people may sharpen their ability to interpret the communication reaching them. Another risk factor is long-term commitment. Participation takes time. It is a process which cannot be rushed to meet deadlines. Long-term commitment is required not just of the funding agency but also of the people. Participation takes up precious time and energy which are often the only resources of members of the community involved. Programs should ideally be designed to deliver sufficient long short-term benefits to motivate the people in maintaining their commitment towards attaining long-term goals. Flexible approaches is another challenge that has to be faced in this method. NGOs and their funding agencies must adopt flexible management approaches in the implementation of participatory programs. The objectives, anticipated outputs and work plan described in documentation for participatory projects will probably change as people begin to take an active part in shaping project activities. Such administrative changes should be welcomed as indication of success rather than symptoms of poor project design. If the organization does not understand this and if it is very rigid and does not want to change its set objectives and set outcomes, it does not help. Many a times once into action, all objectives and all outcomes would change. So let's sum up what we have learned today. This, is, this was module 12 participatory communication methods 
and it dealt with what is participatory communication. Why the word communication is there? You have seen that communication plays a very significant role as far as we're dealing with issues in the community are concerned. And this project started by Paulo Freire has taken a big shape in all communities. This has been, uh, this has been started uh, now in full swing and participatory communication methods are a big success with organizations wherever they have taken part. Only thing the risks and the challenges have to be dealt with very smartly then participatory communication methods are very very successful. Thank you very much.